Greetings, everybody. My name is Elizabeth Price, and I have a blog called Seeing Ink Spots. You can find me on Instagram at Seeing Ink Spots as well, and on Facebook at Seeing Ink Spots. Today, I want to share with you a loaded envelope that I've created to fill with all kinds of fun paper crafted goodies. Today's tutorial is actually to teach you how to make the base pocket and envelope um, contraption here, we'll call it that, that I'm using to um, fill with all kinds of goodies. So you can make tags and different things that you'd like to fill it, but what I really want to share today is my pattern for the base envelope and the front pocket. So let's create together, if you'd like, here are the things you're going to need for today's uh, tutorial. Grab yourself two pieces of cardstock. So I'm gonna use soft succulent. I have two pieces of soft succulent standing by. You're going to need two pieces of matching designer series paper. And so I'm gonna grab the tidings of Christmas. Then you'll just need a few extra goodies. Your trimmer and score, a pair of scissors or snips, paper snips, and I'm using Tombow Multipurpose Liquid Glue, AKA Green Cap is what I call it. So that's all you're gonna need to make the base of the envelope. All right, what I'd like you to do now um, is take a screenshot of these measurements and the scoring details that you'll need for the um, envelope here. I will also post this on my blog, but if you want it nice and handy, just take a screenshot so that you have it for yourself later. So we're gonna go over each of these, but this is just a nice ready reference for later on. Okay, so let's begin. Bring in your Stampin' Up! trimmer and score, and let's open up the arm because we're gonna need it just a little bit bigger. And with our first piece of cardstock, we are going to cut a piece, and I'll just bring this cheat sheet back in here one more time. This is the first one that we're working on, the base envelope, the bigger of the two pockets. And we're going to cut a six and a quarter inch piece by 11, okay? And so our six and a quarter inch piece, if you open up your trimmer, that six and a quarter inch measurement is right there where the arm swings open. So I have six and a quarter, save this, and it's already by 11. Then in my cheat sheet, it says that along the long edge, along the long edge, we're gonna score at five and a half. So I'm just putting my paper in at five and a half. Make sure you get your cutter out of the way and that you score it at five and a half. So we're going to set that one aside and this piece, that we trimmed off, we are going to use that for the plackets that help expand and make it so that the pocket opens up and has a little bit more room. So you're gonna need two plackets that are one and a half by five and a half inches. So before I actually cut this down to one and a half by five and a half, it's already close to one and a half, but let's just take this down to one and a half inches wide. Okay, and I'm not gonna cut it in half just yet because what I'm gonna do is I need two of them, so I'm gonna do all the scoring and then I'll cut it in half. So my first score that I'm going to do, and I'm gonna work on this side of my, um, of my for, for scoring these, I'm gonna work on the right side of the, the um, trimmer here. So we need to score at three eighths. So there's one, two, and three eighths. So um, just right there. So three eighths of an inch. I know I said one, two, three, but what I meant was one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. Okay, just didn't want to confuse anybody. Okay, so there's three eighths. Then we're going to score it again at three quarters of an inch. And again, these um, uh, measurements are on the cheat sheet. Okay, there's three quarters of an inch. And one last score at one and one eighth. Okay. Once you have that score in, then grab this whole piece and we're gonna cut it in half at five and a half. Okay, 
So now we have the two plackets that we're going to use for the main base envelope. So that will go with that. And our second piece that we are going to do, we're gonna need, so from a second piece of cardstock, now we're gonna cut the piece that's going to be the front pocket of the base envelope. So this piece is going to be four and three quarters inches by seven and one eighth. And let me just bring this back in for your reference. So this is the one I'm working on. Front pocket, four and three quarters by seven and one eighth. Okay, so four and three quarters. And I know these eighth measurements aren't as common, but that's how it came together when I was designing it. So four and three quarters by seven and one eighth. So let me just kind of bring this over just a little bit. So there's seven and there's that one eighth. Okay. And this you can set aside and use for decorating other parts of your, your, your loaded envelope, your tags, whatever else you're going to, to put inside. Okay, so this is going to have um, quite a few scores along it. So it says scoring along the long edge at three eighths, three quarters, one and one eighth, six, six and three eighths, and six and three quarters. So again, a screenshot will really help with that. But I'm gonna keep that right here so that I um, know exactly where I'm gonna do them. Whoops. Okay, so my very first score, and again, I'm gonna do this. No, I won't confuse you. Okay, it's just a little tricky for me to do it on this side. So I need three eighths. I'm scoring with my left hand. That's a little funky. <laughs> Then three quarters of an inch. Sounds familiar, right? Like the plackets. Well, that way um, that was intentional so that the plackets opened up the same amount and that there was some uniformity to the design. Okay, so there was the one and one eighth. Okay, so if I bring that in, so I've done that, that, and that. So now my next one, I'm gonna slide it across to six inches. So bring this all the way over to six and you have six inches, okay? And then we're gonna go to six and three eighths. And then the last one will be six and three quarters. There you have it, okay? So one way that you could do this is you could do the one side and then just turn the whole thing and do the other side because they are symmetrical whichever you'd like to do. Then we need to do one last score along the short edge at five eighths of an inch. And so I'm gonna sneak back over here to this side because it's a little bit easier for me to maneuver. So there's half inch and there's that five eighths right in between half inch and three quarters. Okay, so this actually completes all the cutting and scoring for the, the base envelope and the pocket that's on the front. So we can take this aside and set it aside. And now let's bring in, I'm going to bring in a piece of scratch paper because we are going to start gluing and get gather my pieces here. And so let's start with the base of the envelope here, the biggest one, because that's kind of where I started the whole thing. So let's fold that and give it a good crease with your bone folder. Okay, mine got stuck under my computer. So there's a nice crease there. And let's just do that on all of our pieces. Just go through and let's just kind of fold things. So this one, I'm gonna fold upright, okay? And for right now, um, let's do this. Um, even though this is the pocket, and this is a little later into the assembling things, what I want you to do, since we're, you know, using our bone folder right now, so go to the very middle one, okay? So the middle one is going to, so you have one, two, three score lines. And so what, this is the one, it's closest to the middle of the paper, I should say. So go to that third score line and you're gonna fold that one inward, okay? Give it a good crease. Now, the first one, so 
the first score line, second score line, third score line. Let's fold that one back as well. I guess I really should have started with the first one, but it was easiest for me to form the pocket. Now, this number two score line, this one is going to be a valley fold, okay? So you have mountain, valley, mountain, okay? And let's just get a good score on that. Okay, so now you can see how we're gonna be forming that placket for the expandable pockets. Now on this one, so let's take the one closest to the middle again, and that one's gonna fold backwards, okay? So that is a mountain fold, and then the one next to it is going to be a valley, and the last one will be mountain again. Mountain. Sometimes that word trips me up. <laughs> really? Mountain? Okay, so there you have it. There are, that's how we're gonna score the front pocket piece. And our two plackets, these are gonna be easy. These are going to be, we're going to do, we're just gonna fold basically accordion. So start with one forward, one back, and one forward, okay? So you have valley, mountain, valley, okay? Or valley, mount, or mountain, valley, mountain. <laughs> it's about the same either way. They're interchangeable right now. They won't be in a minute. We are gonna put them in in a certain direction. But let's just get them um, good and let's just really burnish these folds in with our bone folder. Okay, get them nice and crisp. It's really gonna help when we start to put things together. So one way to do this easily is if you wanna just fold the middle down one way, give it a good crease, and then bring these others back the other direction. So again, I still have um, accordion folds here. Like you're making a fan. It's a really skinny fan. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm just gonna give this a good burnish. And we will be done with the bone folder for right now, okay? There you have it. Now, the one thing, since um, we're here, these are going to be, just so you can kind of see, these are going to be the plackets that will make it so that we can expand the base of the envelope, okay? So that's gonna, we're just gonna set those aside for right now. And I'm gonna go back to this piece here and just kind of show you what's gonna happen is we're gonna glue these inside the sides here. But you can see right now, it makes it a little poofy right in here. There's a little pooch right there and then it sticks out this end. So we need to remedy that by using our paper snips. And so the first snip we're going to do is I want you to open your placket up, okay? So just fold the, just bring these forward. So now it's just folded in half, okay? And while it's folded in half here, I'm going to take a, make a, a triangular snip out of this. And so I'm on the score line and I'm just gonna angle my snips up to the middle. And so when, it op when I open it up, it looks like that. So we're taking some of the bulk out of the, um, of the placket so that the envelope will lay flatter and nicer in the end, okay? Now, the other snip that I wanna do is I'm going to, and you can fold this back so it's a shorter cut. I'm just gonna cut off like an eighth of an inch straight across. So then that way it doesn't stick out the top. And it's easier now to um, make that cut than it is at the end. So let's do the same thing with our second one. Again, I'm gonna open it up. So I have my scored edge here, and then I'm open on this side. And I'm going to use my snips. I'm at the score line, and I'm diagonally clipping inward. And then if I open it up, it looks like that. And right now it doesn't matter, you know, which direction the folds are because it's the same. You can just turn it over. Now I'm gonna refold it and again, take about an eighth of an inch off the top. Okay, that's our clipping for that. And now when we go to put this in, this is going to lay so much nicer. Remember we were kind of bulky and poking out but now when we set this inside, 
and align this, nothing sticking out the top, and we have a cleaner, tidier look on this, this um, where everything comes together, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So we're just gonna glue that right in place. <coughs> so what I'm gonna do is open this up, and I'm, <coughs> excuse me, and just add some green cap glue. And I like the green cap glue for the very reason that it doesn't set up too fast. I have a few minutes that I can kind of slide my papers around if I need to make any adjustments. While I like Stamp and Seal and Seal Plus um, for an instant stick for some things, I also really like the green cap for being, you know, sure that I'm not gonna, you know, sometimes I can't get it right where I want it. Okay, so what you wanna do is you're gonna kinda give this a fold and yes, you're gonna end up having glue on your fingers, but every good crafter does get glue on their fingers. It's just a badge of honor we wear. <laughs> okay, so I'm just slipping this inside, all right? And then I'm just gonna kinda give this a pinch, slide that over and shut my base right there. Kind of, and I'm just kind of letting the paper pick itself up, you know? And then I can, and see this is where that, the beauty of the green cap glue, the Tombow, that me, you know, it allows me to kind of move that because it was kind of sticking out and so I really wanted it to line up. See it sticking out right there? So I'm just gonna kind of squish that in. Nice, okay, and then I'm just gonna give this a good burnish, kind of burnish those adhesive edges. I've got a little glue right there, but I'll take that off with an adhesive remover. But there you have one side of your placket. So you can see this really is an easy, easy project. It might look like a lot, but it's just, it, it's pretty, 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 pretty simple. Once you kind of know the, um, what the plan is. Okay, I think I'm gonna try just glue on one side this time and see if I'm any more successful. <laughs> We're successful, okay. Again, so if you're looking at my paper, just to make sure you're doing it the right way, you want to make sure that the um, open ends are inside, okay? The edges of the paper. And now I'm just gonna do some glue right in here. Hopefully you can see where I'm doing that. Yeah, that's a little bit easier to do one side at a time. Yeah, I like to make things difficult. <laughs> and there you have the base envelope. Easy peasy. All right. Now I had mentioned, let's get rid of that little bit of, um, because we're going to go ahead and put a piece of designer series paper on here. And I don't want that glue coming through. Okay, it's all about um, having tidy uh, work, craftsmanship, so that, you know, your projects look extra, you know, they're just crisp and clean when you're finished. Okay, so my first piece of designer series paper is just designed to layer on top. Now, you might want to make the layer smaller you might want to make it a little bit bigger and go all the way to the edge. That's totally up to you. This piece of designer series paper is six inches wide by five and a quarter inches long. And it's listed on my cheat sheet that I shared with you earlier, okay? So let's just glue this one in place. And again, I like the green cap because I can slide this around and make sure I'm lining things up pretty, you know, they're not exact, but they're, they're nice. Okay, kind of give that a good rub. Now, we're going to set this aside for just a second while we work just a little bit on the front pocket that's going to um, go right there on top. But you'll notice we did the scoring. So we have our, our plackets for the side. And then you have 
this side right here. But if you go to fold that up, you've got all that bulk in there. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before and we're gonna remove a big chunk of it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that, um, that kind of diagonal clip again. But first what I want to do is I'm gonna take this one right out. So I'm just gonna take this notch right out, okay? And you can kind of trim this out however you want, but you do need to get that bulk out so that when you go to put this up, it's not, it's just not so bulky. Okay, so now that I have that little notch out, let's fold this in half and we're going to take some more bulk. We're gonna do that diagonal clip trick again. So <coughs> this kind of came in with it. Okay, so I'm going from the score line and I'm gonna go, you can't get the score line. Okay, hello. And I'm just gonna go right up into there. And like I say, you can trim out as much of this or as little as this, um, little of this as you want. Um, I'm gonna take this one out. So, you know, I kind of do this different every time and that's okay. <laughs> the, the trick is get some of that bulk out of there. All right, so let me do the same thing to this side. Let's go ahead and actually let's, this time I'm gonna take two of these out and see if this is a little bit better. It's been a little while since I've made one of these, so I apologize. Now this one here, I'm going to cut diagonally up and take out some of that bulk. And now when we fold this up, it's so much easier to fold my paper up into there, okay? But I think I'm gonna trim out even a little bit more and that is, I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna angle this off just a little bit more so that when this folds up, I'm not showing any of that, okay? So however you'd like, you just don't want it coming out this side. And right now it's coming out that side a little bit. And so I'm trying to disguise that and, and have some tidiness, <laughs> I like that tidy. So let's just kind of give this a fold, okay? It's kind of, kind of ugly but it's going to hide, it's not gonna show. And so I do have a little bit right there, a little bit right there. So I'm just going to coax a little bit of that out, okay? Now don't get all the way to that bottom because then you'll have a funny little raw edge. But see, you can just kind of clean up some of this and take some of that bulk right out. It's a lot like um, if you were making a pocket on a shirt, for a sewing project, okay? All right, so I like that. I don't have quite as much bulk in there, okay? And again, give it a good, I'm just gonna kind of shape that a little bit. All right, now this is going to glue to the front of our base envelope, right on the center there. So bring in the green cap. Get some down in there. Get some down in there as well. Bring it all the way up. And then across this bottom tab. Hello, let's get it on the tab. <laughs> and I'm gonna flip this around. Kind of give those corners a little squeeze. And then this is just going to center right in the middle of the base pocket. Okay, and I'm just gonna hold it in place for just a second. While I, and, and I'm holding that in place and I'm gonna bring in my second piece of designer series paper. And again, this measurement is on the cheat sheet, but I'll bring this in just so you can see it one more time. So my second piece is gonna be four and a half inches wide by three and three quarter inches tall. Okay, let me just make sure this has got a good stick to it. You know, maybe come in here so I'm, I'm inside the little placket part and I'm just giving it a good burnish. Just really get it nice and crisp. That looks, this looks really good. I like this color combination. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and throw this piece on. Again, this piece is four and a half inches wide by three and three quarter inches tall. So the only thing you're gonna to wanna to do is like this piece here that was, um, you know, has a print that it makes a difference if it's up weight, you know, upright or sideways or 
So just be be careful that you're you know being aware of those measurements and those cuts. This one didn't really matter, but the trees did. Okay, so there you have it, folks. That was pretty simple, don't you think? Now the fun part is filling it and having some um, good times making all kinds of handcrafted things. So let me bring in my other loaded envelope that I shared on my blog and I'll show you what's in here. So, and I, you know, there's still room for more stuff if you wanna do it. So I actually found, uh, these are cookies and cream candy canes, which I thought the black, because I was going with a black and white and silver and Merlot color palette that these were great. So they're, they're cookies and cream, Amazon. All right, so a couple of candy canes and um, a loaded envelope needs some beautiful tags. So I do have some beautiful tags in here. Um, and everything that you're seeing here, I've used the same color palette, all the same ink colors, um, soft succulent, evening evergreen, Mary Merlot, and basic gray, and um, sometimes smoky slate. So it just kind of depended what I was stamping. So um, just having fun with that merriest moments bundle making things. So this one here, I'll just share with you, has a nice dry embossed tag using the hybrid folder that's in that bundle. And that's the black and white gingham that was in the Halloween section of the July, December catalog. All right, tailored tags. This is delightful tag topper. If you look at the back, you can see that shape there. Um, but again, so that everything coordinates, I just stuck with the same colors of ink and the same uh, stamps and dies. And so um, some of the glittered organdy, just having some fun. All of the rhinestones that I used on this project are from the holiday rhinestone pack. So I used the green. And even though this is um, kind of a pool party color, it looks great. And it starts to take on the succulent color with this. I also included some of the silver foil from the foil pack that we have. So here's another one with a delightful tag topper. So handmade tags are a must. And make them, make them foofy and fun with all kinds of ribbons. And some people ask, why do you have your ribbon tails so long? And the reason for that is this is ready to go come time for packaging something. So if I've tied some nice wide ribbon to a package, I can just reach this up and around the bow and give it a tie, okay? If it's too short like this, what are you gonna do with it? So that's why these actually are long so that I can use them for wrapping in a few weeks here. Okay, the other thing that's in here, I have a couple gift card holders in here and these are simple. They are six by six pieces of paper folded in half. I mean, how hard is that? Fold a piece of six by six in half and then I eyeballed this little lapel that I've made. I just folded it over, decorated the lapel, and then I've tucked, um, this is a stitched so sweetly rectangle, and I've just kind of made a tag. And then so the back of this, I could put a, um, a glue dot on there for a gift card or however you want to do it. Um, I used the gift card off this one. It was all nice and pretty, but yeah, it was a Target card and... Uh, <laughs> I needed something at Target, so I used it. Okay, here's more of those holiday rhinestone gems in the shaded spruce. I think they look great on the evening evergreen. And these are the cherry cobbler, which blend perfectly with the Merlot. Okay, so the other cool thing that's in here, there is a hot chocolate. This is just kind of a pouch that, you know, has a nice Ghirardelli hot chocolate pack in here. The other thing that would be fun in this are Ghirardelli chocolate squares. And I think every loaded envelope needs a wand and a paper wand is fun. So it looks like it got just a little bit smashed, but that's okay. So I've made a rosette using DSP and I've hot glued it to a paper straw. I've added paper curls. This is the snowy white, and it's really pretty. Um, it's the snowy white velvet paper. And again, the merriest moments die cuts. And um, there's a little bit of chenille tucked in here. It's kind of fun. More of the foil that there's three colors of foil in that silver pack. I don't remember 
what the name is. But anyway, so uh, what to do with a Christmas wand or a wand any you know of any sort. Um, this looks great tucked into a gift bag, kind of right into the tissue in lieu of a bow. Um, I think it looks great tied to a loaf of bread. Whatever you want to do, these are fun and can be used in different ways. They, are, they look good tucked into a wreath or a garland as well. And here is a closer look at my finished envelope. So you can see there's foil and there's the, um, the Peaceful Place Designer Series paper. So there's a lot of sparkle on this one. And um, the white embossing. Um, this was the only other stamp set I brought in. Uh, holiday Wishes. Oh, I can never, heartfelt wishes. I can never remember the name, but it's in the July, December catalog and it's great. Uh, but, and I like that little banner look going across. So there you have it, my loaded envelope. I hope now that you know how simple the base is to make, make one and have a good time filling it and give it to one of your favorite Stampin' Friends or to your mom or whoever you think would really appreciate a fun, charming work of heart.